and it's my pleasure now to introduce Mark Fortin. Mark is the president of the Retail Council of Canada, Quebec. He'll share the tools, guidance, and insights needed to leverage a seamless omni-channel approach that continues to integrate online and offline retail worlds for a positive customer experience, maintaining business growth now and beyond. Joining Mark is Christian Bork, EVP and senior partner at Leger, and Jean-Philippe Gauthier, head of platforms and digital marketing transformation at Google. They will discuss how consumer habits and behaviors are changing due to COVID-19 and what it means to reimagine retail with a customer-centric approach. Welcome, Mark, and thank you. Thank you, John. So first, I'm going to say a few words in, in French, and then uh, we're going to have a presentation, a couple presentations, quick presentations in English, and then we're going to have a discussion in French. So this is a real Canada. We're going to do this bilingual back and forth. So uh, without further ado, thank you for Canada Post for organizing this webinar. Uh, well overdue with, uh, with Christmas coming around. I think it's going to be really important for retailers and, and for any businesses to understand what they can do to actually get better at, uh, at communicating with customers and, and selling their products through different network. Donc, avec la pandémie, uh, le commerce en ligne a été propulsé cinq ans dans le futur. Ça a causé évidemment des enjeux d'approvisionnement, de systèmes, de technologies, d'hébergement, de capacité, de logistique. De... Like social distancing, we've had uh, certain experiences with clients and and the pandemic, it changes the client and the management of, uh, of commerce. So it has exploded online, uh, online uh, experiences have just grown, they've exploded uh, through Google uh, and through Post Canada, we're going to offer some solutions to better understand the consumer, the options that are available to reimagine the client's experience and uh, in the store and online. And Christian is going to uh, explain the, the uh, consumer's behavior. And um, so Christian Bock will discuss that. And then the uh, other presenter, who is Jean Philippe Gautier, is going to talk about reimagining the retail experience experience and uh, we're going to uh, have a discussion period for 15 minutes without further ado Christian uh, the platform is yours I can't say past the stage oh thank you Mark je vais partager quelques diapos pendant quelques minutes parce que nous... Canadians were actually changing the changing the way they do things during this pandemic we did this in collaboration with uh, an advertising firm called LG2 uh, and what we want to present uh, today very briefly is just the breadth of that change, just how much Canadians are different today compared them to what they were six months ago. Uh, first things first, though, we're tracking every week how uh, Canadians react to the pandemic itself. After a brief pause over the summer, what we find today is that fear of contracting the disease is as high in September as it was back in April. Basically, this means that whenever it comes to safety measures that customers expect in uh, retail or service uh, uh, suppliers that they will visit, they expect those places to be cleaner than clean. They, again, are afraid of contracting the disease, and it is basically defining their expectations on what a retail experience should be. However, on the downside of this is when we ask Canadians uh, in our survey, by and large, uh, are those safety measures an incentive to visit that retailer or are they basically a constraint or an obstacle to enjoying your customer experience in store? And I think if we go to the next slide, what we'll see is that Canadians are basically divided uh, on this. While close to 50% uh, basically expect uh, or, or believe that this, these safety measures are an incentive to visit a retailer and to feel safe at a retailer, Still, we have about a third of, of Canadians who believe that it's an obstacle to enjoying yourself in the store. So this uh, transition has pushed Canadians to shop more online than they ever have in the past. And the fact that their retail experience right now is not as enjoyable as it used to be in the old world prior to COVID, it is still fueling that 
aspiration of Canadians to do more online, to be more autonomous, and to basically be able to accomplish more than they would potentially like uh, online. The next slide shows you just how big of, uh, of, the, of a change it's actually been. 65% of Canadians report that they either are doing something, some form of online transaction with a company today, uh, much more often than they used to or for the very first time in their lives. One out of every two Canadians, 50% of Canadians, have actually bought something online for the very first time in their lives in a way that they never have before. When uh, uh, Mark was telling us it's sort of a it's sort of a five year leap, it's sort of a, it's foot to the floor in terms of how quick that tr that transformation has actually occurred. What we're doing today in Canada in terms of interacting with brands online is what potentially retailers expected down the road, two, three to five to eight years uh, down the road. It's all happened over twelve weeks. The data you're seeing here is from July, where already half of Canadians were doing things for the very first time in their lives. And one interesting aspect, and it's tied to the fact that customer experience in store is not what it used to be. 82% of Canadians say that they want to continue with their sort of new habits into the future or even after the pandemic uh, is gone. So this idea of going back to the old way of doing things is not there. Let us remind ourselves that over the past 200 years, whenever a new technology or there's new technology adoption in a population, we never go back to the old way of doing things. Uh, when we discovered cars, none of us went back to horses. And this is basically what is happening right now in Canada. On the next slide, uh, we will show you just how big the transformation has been in certain key areas. Now, there'll be a, a lot of numbers on that slide, but let's just focus on the top two. Close to 14% of Canadians have actually purchased groceries online for in-store pickup for the very first time in their lives. And close to 10% have actually ordered groceries online for um, uh, for home delivery. Now, if you look at this, uh, and and uh, when we actually were presenting similar data with with people from Nielsen, they were saying that prior to the, the pandemic, two percent of food bought in Canada was bought online. Two percent prior to the pandemic, they were in in early July up to nineteen percent of all food bought in Canada was now bought online. And there'll be some going back to the old way of doing things, but basically. This change is uh, with us to stay. If we go outside retail uh, and we look at other forms of, of transactions with, with other uh, professionals, uh, the next slide will show you, for example, that a, th that a third of us um, have actually have had a medical consultation online. And if we look at, and when we ask Canadians, and were you satisfied with that consultation, satisfaction levels are in the 80s. Look at the percentage of Canadians who, for the very first time, have actually done some form of online transaction at a bank, for example, or with their telecommunications provider for the very first time in our lives. Over 10% of, of us have actually followed a class online for the first time in our lives. All of these no ways of making us more autonomous means that we want to do more things when we interact with brands and do them online. What it means for brands, however, is regardless of how much we want to do online ourselves, the brand has to be with us the whole way. They need to recognize who we are as a customer, help us along the way, and be there when we need them. The level of agility that we require now from brands is something uh, we had never seen in, in the past. Some brands are ready for it. Some brands are actually successful at it. Some brands may not. One last element as well that's an opportunity uh, during this pandemic is the fact that Canadians want to buy Canadian more than any time uh, in recent history. Uh, if we go to the next slide, we'll see that uh, one in five of us actually is buying, saying that they are buying more local products since the start of the pandemic. Two thirds of us say we want to buy more Canadian products or local brands into the future, which th this means that if local brands, local manufacturers, local retailers can actually focus on their online strategy and omni-channel strategy to make sure that they tap into this new opportunity, that buying Canadian provides, I think is one way for us to make it out of this crisis in a better position than we were going into it. Uh, I'll turn it over quickly to, uh, uh, to uh, Jean-Philippe uh, from Google, but basically this is not an evolution of the way we shop. This has been a revolution over the past few months. Jean-Philippe? Merci beaucoup, Christian. Jean-Philippe, on te laisse aller. 
Excellent. Um, so my name is Jean-Philippe. My mom calls me Jean-Philippe. Usually it's JP. I am the head of the digital marketing transformation at Google Canada. I'm based out of Montreal, but I have team members throughout Canada. I'm really happy to be here this, this afternoon. Uh, my team has the privilege, privilege to work with traditional retailers, pure e-commerce leaders, and even you know e-commerce enablers such as you know Shopify. Um, I also work for a company that capture a lot of customer intent through you know through that little search bar. Um, a great example of this is like in March when you know this whole thing hit us, uh, we saw surge volume for curbside pickup grew by seventy percent in just one week. Right, so. Um, Things have changed. Um, so obviously, you know, COVID-19 has been a, a great focus over the last few months for all of us. But truth to be told, and, and that's the next slide, um, there, there were fundamental changes in our industry. Uh, namely, there's an increase for use and demand for privacy. And, and that will, you know, will continue uh, as a result of, you know, additional privacy regulation, whether it is in Europe, in California, probably soon, you know, in Canada as well. And also, you know, what happened with, um, with uh, browsers, especially, you know, Safari and Mozilla and in a few years, Chrome, you know, will no longer accept what we call third-party cookie. And fundamentally, you know, that thing will have an impact on the way that we measure, you know, e-commerce um, online and offline. And I think we all have seen that, you know, that great quote, I'll repeat like, you know, for the third time, you know, we have vaulted five years forward in consumer and business digital adoption in a matter of over, you know, eight weeks. So what Christian was saying in terms of, uh, of, a, of a revolution, you know, it really, really, really happened. And, and you know, think about groceries, you know, who would have thought 19% uh, is now bought online. Um, so one of the brands that I really like is and, and that I really liked and really understood what was going on was you know Lululemon and I'll get back to Lululemon in just a second, um, but let me start by saying that Canada's e-commerce moment is now and it's that simple, and, and the proof is that e-commerce you know was growing year over year, and if you could just change a slide I think you know the visual will will speak a little bit more. Um, but e-commerce was growing at 20% year over year. Now we're seeing, you know, that growth being 100% year over year. Some companies are even reporting growth of 400%. So e-commerce has exploded. And I think, you know, we, we previously mentioned it. Um, this is here to stay. Um, you know, we created habits. And we as human beings are a creature of habits. So we're all use and feel pretty confident about you know, our ability to buy and receive things you know, online. Uh, curbside you know, is another way that um, you, know, you, can, you, know, you can get your goods. But anyway, it, that, that's there to stay. So about 25 years ago, uh, when I started in that business, there's a guy, I think his name was Don Pepper. He came up with this notion of personalization. And, and I think you know, personalization Today in 2020, it's really there to stay. Um, most of us as retailers, you know, are not, you know, really doing it. We all deliver the same experience. One good company that does that very well is Netflix. When you think about it, my own page is very different than Christian and Mark. And everyone, you know, on this virtual conference have a different experience with Netflix. You know, why it's that? Um, I think they understood the power of personalization. So back to Lululemon, um, I was, you know, lately shopping for a new sweatshirt. I was logged in. Um, I left the website, and guess what? In my inbox, I receive an email saying, hey, are you really ready to buy this, you know, this sweatshirt? Um, so to do that, you know, Lululemon has invested heavily in automation, um, and they did that early, and they're ripping up the benefits of doing that today. So the real question at the core of, you know, what we're going to discuss this afternoon is, you know, those leader that embraces, you know, e-commerce and personalization and all that, how do they do that? And if you could I'll pass it to the next slide. Um, the, the first thing that they did is they went through um, an assessment. 
Well, I call that digital marketing transformation. You can call it maturity, digital maturity, however you want to call it. You know, um, you can take an assessment. We do offer that online, but you know, the, or you can you know get a, get a consultant. The bottom line is to um, take a look at you know where you are on your digital marketing transformation. Most Canadian, and we've done that with you know hundreds of Canadian companies now. You know they are on stage number two out of four. They are what we call emerging. So there's a lot of things that they could do to uh, to improve. So those who go on that journey, um, the first thing that they do, and they do it well, it's uh, it's what we call first party data. So they're able to get data on the people that are visiting the website. Um, and they're also able to integrate this data, you know, uh, offline and online. Because um, we now live, you know, in an era of predictive analysis. You know, we can predict that somebody will, you know, do something and uh, eventually, you know, buy something online. Um, remember that personalization I was talking about? Well, you can really use, you know, the lifetime value of a customer. And, and sometimes, you know, I, I don't like really the lifetime value. Life, <laughs> life can be, uh, you know, uh, long. You know, how about, you know, just measuring, you know, this year, you know, value of a customer. And then once you are able to do that, and those who are able to do that, um, they can really build a marketing plan, you know, around those tactics. So new versus returning customers, I value customers versus churn customers. So back to my personalization example, if you do that, you can have different you know, tactics and that will prove right in, from a return on investment perspective. Um, the third point is omnichannel tracking. So more than ever, you know, people are, you know, e-commerce, they go uh, in, in your store. How do you track, you know, that same individuals, you know, touching, you know, the different uh, touch points? Um, the whole notion of incrementality is also, you know, um, something that, you know, that is really important. And, and the notion of incrementality is, you know, if you stop doing something, what, what is the impact on, you know, the outcome that you're looking at? Um, in other words, if you stop investing money in X, does that have, you know, an impact on, on what you're trying to accomplish? So incrementality is really, really important. Um, lastly, and, you know, what is very, uh, very important is that, in this new world, and I, I describe it, this new world as you know the era of automation and prediction, um, the real question that you need to ask is, do I have the right ta talent? Do I have, as an example, a marketing science team who could support me in this new reality of first party data, putting all this data in one database and trying to you know, predict you know, an outcome? So that's really, you know, really, really, really important. Um, I'm going to leave you with, you know, uh, some thoughts on the holidays because I know it's coming, right? We're 90 days from Christmas. Um, the first thing is, and if you could present the next slide, that will be great. Um, you know, if you go on Google and we have a ton, we have a ton of materials. So if you type, think with Google and add holiday, you know, you'll end up, you know, on a lot of, you know, content. That, that we produce. Um, one interesting data point is that 35% of Canadians try a new brand or retailer during COVID. So there's still, you know, you know a lot of uh, momentum around, you know, discovering, you know, a, a new brand online, which is, I think, a good thing for all of us. Um, you can, you know, read that slide. I've got, you know, some stats, but to summarize it, the holiday will be earlier and bigger. If you think about Mother's Day, and, we, and if you look at all the queries, you know, people started to shop for Mother's Day stuff, you know, quite earlier than all the previous year. And early signs right now, you know, on Black Friday, is it's going to be the same thing. So people will look, it's going to be earlier and bigger. And, and my... my my personal, you know, um, prediction is that passio eater, you know, will be a very popular term. You know, the, the whole home improvement team, you know, will continue throughout, you know, the, the holiday season. 
Um, and if you want to see those trends, you know, you can go on Google Trends. It's a well-known uh, tool that we have. Um, so, um, you know, one thing for sure, and one thing you know, in my mind that is true is that we created, you know, new habits. People are loving it. They're loving, you know, shopping online, and and it is there. It is here to stay. So, you know what? We might, you know, as well adapt to it. <laughs>